boy, all this traffic is fantastic. It's converting like gangbusters. We love this, but man, is it expensive. Uh, having to pay for every single click is seriously eating into our budget because our ad spend is 2,500 bucks and man, our margins would be so much better if we didn't have to pay for every single click. This PPC uh, is just too expensive. What do we do? Well, you're talking about SEO, search engine optimization. And that is just a fancy way of saying building a relationship with Google. That's it. That's all it is. And so many people want to keep SEO a mystery because the less you know about how it works, the less capable you are of understanding that they're actually bad at their job because there's not a lot that you need to claim to be an SEO expert aside from a laptop and saying, I'm an SEO expert. So there are a lot of people who are not very good at what they do that burn a lot of clients and can churn through clients uh, without damaging the reputation because they can just come up with another pseudonym or, or whatever. So SEO is long-term the most valuable thing that you can invest in for your business long-term. That's the, the key word here because you're looking at about 6 to 12 months at the fastest if you're doing everything perfectly at the right level of engagement because it really comes down to what's your competition doing? What kind of relationship are they building with Google? And the other part of this is you could do everything perfectly and that's the fastest that it could be done but that still doesn't mean that the effects of doing the right thing are going to be instant because you are building a relationship with Google and Google does not rush things. So there's the fastest it can be done, which again, doesn't automatically translate to a week later, you, you're at the top of the search results um, because Google has had 15 plus years to learn how all this stuff works. It's got billions of data points to understand behavior patterns and what works and what doesn't work. And, and remember that analytics being installed on a website means that they now have a complete view of everything that happens there. So Google knows what's up. Google knows everything. It's, it's smarter than anybody I've ever met, and you're, you're not going to outsmart it. So SEO is what does Google want? How do you give it what it wants at the best way possible? And that is how you get more visible for different search terms. Um, so in terms of analogies, PPC is going out to a restaurant for dinner tonight, it's gonna to be great, fast, uh, expensive. SEO is planting a garden and then it's going to take six, eight months before you'd ever be able to make a single meal with it. But when you do get to the point that you could make dinner with it, it is extraordinarily cost effective. But instead of money, it's time and effort. So that's why PPC fills the gap as your SEO improves and your rankings get better. And when we're talking about rankings, that means when somebody searches with a question or a problem that you're the answer to or solution to, then where do you get put in the order of, of results? And the main commodity that Google is doing business in is the trust of people searching, which is why if Google made it pay to play for those organic search results, which you know today are the most relevant to the question or problem that you have, it's that understanding, that belief that boy, these really are the best results, not just the ones that people are going to pay Google to show me, but these are really genuinely the best results. 
it's that, that trust that Google is absolutely um, just, it's gone all in to preserve that trust. So Google needs to know, well, are you really the best answer? And there are a couple hundred different details about your presence online that it takes into account in order to determine for this kind of search, where should you go in the rank of ideal results? Um, all those details matter. Some of them matter more than others. And of all those couple hundred d different details, they all fall into three buckets. That's it. Just three buckets. The first one is technical. What are you built on? Are the scripts, the, the behind the scenes stuff that makes the whole machine run, how janky is that? Are, are there things in the header of the website that are running that prevents everything else from loading be behind it and now it's a long load time? Well, that's a technical issue that's not managed perfectly, so that's a ding there. So all the technical details have to be managed perfectly. The second bucket is on-site. What's everything that's on your website? And how much time do people spend on your website? And how many pages do they visit when they're on your website? All those elements of on-site have to be managed perfectly. And that involves blogs, those articles. When were they posted? How recently? How fresh is the freshest content? How long does somebody spend on your site when they've searched with this term? The longer they spend, then Google interprets that as, oh, they found it more useful and therefore they're sticking around longer. I get it. So they've spent two minutes on there, so that's forever in internet time. So that means that this is, this is relevant to that kind of search phrase and then that gets stored in Google's brain. Okay, so that's more relevant, neat. Um, and just recently, like within the past couple of weeks in from the time that I'm making this video, uh, for a year previous, Google gave the world a heads up that, hey, we're going to be making a ton of very large changes to how we digest what happens on your website, and that will have a direct impact on your rankings. And it has been a whole year letting people get used to it. And then like two weeks ago, it went live. And that is Web Core Vitals. You can look it up. Uh, you can Google it. And the best answers will be at the top. But basically, it boils down to what is the user's experience on your website and those core elements that dictate how happy they're going to be with your site. And it sounds very abstract, but you've experienced a web core vital element anytime on your phone or even on desktop as the page has loaded and then there's a button and you're like, oh, that's the button I need to click. And then you go to click it and then it goes burp because an ad loaded and now it got shifted down and now you clicked on the ad and you're like, they did that on purpose, right? <laughs> All that kind of content shifting, there's a lot of reasons that it happens, but that it happens is no good. And it's a really bad user experience, makes me bummed out. So why would Google send me to a page that I would get angry at visiting? So Google doesn't want those websites being ranked anymore. So if you're re seeing this, and you haven't heard about this before, and you're really mad at all those kind of tricky button shifting kinds of things, well, you'll be happy to know that any website that still does that or allows that to happen due to negligence or uh, intentionally are going to have severe penalties in terms of where they're ranked in the search results. So 
that's actually a really, really cool thing. Um, it's it's a deeper issue on a technical level and on-site issue than most SEO people are used to addressing. So it means that SEO, good SEO, is even more difficult. It's going to require even more effort in a sustained manner. So that's good news for the people that can do it. Really bad news for uh, the people who are outsourcing everything to uh, Fiverr contractors for two bucks an hour. So sorry, but not sorry. So that is on-site. So we've got technical, we've got on-site, and those first two are foundational. They're fundamental. They need to be managed. And once they're managed, they can um, handle a little less direct attention. You're never going to ignore it completely, but it's going to be, require less day-to-day -day maintenance. But it's, you're still touching those. Uh, anytime you're adding a new article or blog or page to your site, uh, you're, you're going to address those fundamentals. The third bucket is the one that is the most important long term, and that's called off-site SEO. And that is everything that happens off of your website to help Google understand what you're relevant to, what your relationship is, and what you're all about. So the story I like to use to think about this is uh, imagine that Google is throwing a party called the internet and there are some people at this party that Google went to college with. Um, Google is the godfather of that person's kid. Google introduced that guy to his wife. Uh, so those, those small group of people, Google really knows inside and out, trust with his life, and uh, bosom buddies. Now, there's everybody else at the party, and there's a ton of people at this party. It's a very big house. And those are the freeloaders. Those are the people who are just there because they know Google throws a hell of a party, and they are there for the free booze and pizza. Now, you come to the party. You show up. Which two, like which of those two groups do you want vouching for you? If you walk in the door and the freeloaders are going, oh, hey, Jonathan, good to see you. Or it's the people that Google trusts going, oh, hey, Jonathan, good to see you. Which of those two, if you wanted to build a solid relationship with Google, would you rather be recognized by? The core group of awesome people, right? So in SEO terms, those are websites that Google already has relationships with, and then that website vouching for you is them putting a link to your website on their website. So somewhere on their website, it might be an article saying, hey, there's this new fantastic mentalist in the world. His name is Jonathan Pritchard. He's fantastic. He works with Fortune 500 companies. If if you need applied psychology and to understand the minds of your customers and clients, go check them out at elite.university. That website would be linking back to my website, and that's why they're called backlinks. Not all backlinks are created equal. Google takes into account the quality of the website that is backlinking to you. So, if you've got 10,000 backlinks, but they're all hot garbage websites of 0% uh, trust with Google, those aren't going to do you any good compared to having something from uh, Harvard or some kind of really high domain authority. Domain authority is just a fancy term of saying, what's your trust score? How much does Google trust you? The higher the number, the better, right? So a lot of high quality backlinks is the main focus moving forward with effective SEO. The next question is always, okay, that's great. What, um, what do we do to get a backlink? Well, that's why there is no automated process to get high quality backlinks. It has to be a hand prepared strategy because you have to see what websites are relevant to my industry? 
what do they need in order to backlink to me? Is it a pay to play listing or is it a review site? Best mentalists of the century. Uh, and then I need to go tell them, hey, look, I'm I'm fantastic. Or it might be that they host guest articles and you go, hey, what uh, what are you guys looking for? Do you want this topic, that topic, that topic? We would love to, to write an article uh, on any of those. You just tell us which one you want. And they go, you know, we don't have one on that second topic. How about you do that? Anything uh, between 600 and 800 words and, and that'll be great. So then you've got to write a good article that they feel confident putting on their their platform. So if you write for Forbes or Inc. or Entrepreneur Magazine, those are really reputable sources, but really difficult to get in, which is kind of why their trust score is so high. But when you write for them and then your author profile says, find out more on their website, elite.university, well, boom, there's your backlink. So that's why anybody who says, oh yeah, for 500 bucks, we guarantee you a thousand backlinks per month and that's really going to do it for you. That is a huge red flag because the way, the only way they can make that work is that they've set up 10,000 of their own garbage websites, their own garbage URLs. They add your domain as a backlink to a thousand of them this month. Google knows exactly what they're doing. Google knows that they're just a link farm. The person telling you that they're great at SEO knows exactly what they're doing and that it's not going to have the positive impact you think because it's a whole bunch of freeloaders recommending you, right? So they are literally banking on the fact that you haven't gone through this course and you don't understand that that's what they're doing. So that's that's one reason why uh, paying so little means you get so little because you think that the deliverable is going up. Oh, they promised that a thousand backlinks would be indexed every month and look at that just like clockwork. They're delivering that KPI, boom, they're hitting a thousand every month. This is fantastic until it's 12, 18 months later and you finally realize, hey, wait a minute, we've got 18,000 backlinks, but our trust score is still at a one, <laughs> 1 percent out of 100 percent, 100 percent's awesome. We're still hot garbage. Wait a minute. Our search results are still on page seven or eight. The thing that we want to have happen hasn't gone up. It's all a razzle dazzle. They're trying to help you focus on the KPI they can deliver on, which you think translates to the result you want, but they're hyper focused on the deliverable instead of its effect. So best way to do it is to think of it like you're dating Google. You want friends and referrals that you're a great match. So you've got to consistently show up. You can constantly have to maintain a relationship with Google. You have to build new connections, build your network, find new websites to connect with. Um, so that's kind of one reason why podcasts are such a great strategy if you are kind of personality driven coach or or anybody really. So you appear on the podcast and then that podcast will list your website on their show notes. Those show notes get put on Google Podcasts, on iTunes, on uh, audible.com, everywhere. And that link goes on all of those. Plus Google knows that it's podcast stuff, but still it's not nothing. So those are positive there. So that's that's kind of one one strategy there. So that is kind of SEO, why it takes a long time, why it's so difficult, but you know, it is super, super valuable to be found at the top for very valuable searches. Um, in reference to the company I work with, if you're looking for world-class SEO work, 
it should be all comprehensive, um, content writing, technical, on-site, off-site, building those backlinks, everything. If you are a mom and pop shop and you are just looking to show up in your neighborhood, then you could be looking at $1,500 baseline to manage all that stuff just for a local thing. If you are at a national level for something, for a topic that's valuable but not necessarily geographically bound, then you're looking at $3,000 to $5,000 per month. If you are in a really valuable vertical, then we've there's some clients that are north of $50,000 per month focused on content generation, backlink building, uh, in order to stay at the top position, um, because it's it's worth it, right? It it is it is worth it. So that is SEO PPC for the short term to get visibility. SEO for the long term. Uh, it's just that it is very important, but not at all urgent, because companies gotta eat before six eight months from now. So they focus all of their efforts into PPC, but then they don't do PPC really well. So they are wasting a lot of their ad spend on poorly defined ads. So then they never have the profit margin to reinvest in SEO. So they just get trapped in that that cycle of throwing money um, out the out the window for PPC. So then they never inv invest in SEO. So then they can never afford to rise in the rankings to dial down their PPC. So that's the the treadmill I want you to avoid. So there you go. Technical, on site, off site. That's what they are. That's why they matter. That's what makes up SEO. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please hit me up in the group where everybody can see it and we will all benefit. There you go. That's SEO. Next up is what if uh, I'm doing something totally new that nobody knows about? What do, we, what do we do in that case? Well, we got you covered in the next lesson.